Hello, I'm Hermione Coburn. Welcome to Resource Review here at the Science Museum in London. Our aim is to help you choose resources that will make a real difference to your teaching. And today, our subject is secondary design and technology. The resources that we'll be looking at are ArtCam for Education software being used with a Unimatic Educam 3 axis machining centre and Camtasia Studio software. Both of these resources are similar to tools used in the real world of engineering and design. Later on, with the help of our panel, we'll be discussing how effective they are in teaching secondary design and technology. But now let's take a look at the resources being used in the classroom. Teacher Steve Watts at Allenwell School has a Year 9 class designing 3D projects. They are using design software called ArtCam to draw their designs and convert them into 3D images on the computer screen. ArtCam is professional software but is available free to teachers through the Design and Technology Association. The pupils' finished designs are then moulded by the Unimatic Educam Machining Centre which Steve has on loan. So let's see how Steve and his class got on. OK. Oh, go back to technology. Right. OK. Now go to next. ArtCam is a package, a drawing package, that enables you to convert any sort of imaginative idea into, firstly, a two-dimensional object, and then convert that two-dimensional object into a three-dimensional object. Now, we're working on ArtCam, and as you work through the art cam and you start saving the work, then you'll move through to use the milling machine. So then we've got a three-dimensional view, but of course we've only got that three-dimensional view in a series of pixels and what have you. If you can pick the points in space of that object, that three-dimensional object, and you can convert that into a series of numbers, and once you know the points in space, of all of those of that object, you then have a three-dimensional image which can then be manufactured. Change the height to 0.6 and size keeps to 5. Click add and then voila. The Unimatic Educam machine, uh, which we have in pride of place in the corner of our room now, uh, it's a machine that's been built for training, been built for this sort of activity and uh, I think the software has also got that sort of built into it and makes it uh, quite straightforward for the students to use. The kit that we've got here is my capitation several times over. So um, it's a very expensive activity. OK, off you go. So we've just seen the ArtCam for Education software being used with the Unimatic Educam Machining Centre. And to discuss it, we have our resource review panel. With me today are Jonathan Boyle, a deputy head teacher at Walsall Academy and our design and technology expert, Ray Barker, director of BISA, the British Educational Suppliers Association, and Alan Mills, head of the affiliation network for the Specialist Schools Trust. Jonathan, turning to you first, can you tell me a little bit more about the two resources, beginning with ArtCam for Education? Well, I've got to say, as a result of seeing that footage there of Steve Watt and his students using ArtCam for Education at that school, I found it absolutely fabulous. ArtCam for Education is a very simple piece of software and has a variety of levels of sophistication. For example, I could take a photograph of your face and within moments I could be machining it out on that machine you saw there today. Or I could do a simple design using a painted picture and actually make it into a 3D model. The way in which the software works is very straightforward. You associate colours with shapes and height, and it's as simple as that. And the great thing about ArtCam for Education is, once it's in a school, the students can be given a copy to take home with them and work with this at home as well. Ray, what did you think of those resources being used in the classroom? It's fascinating to see just how professional those departments are now. I mean, that's professional standard software um, and hardware, in fact. And, and you know, that is now um, a sort of given in schools, really, rather than uh, in my day when it was making a tray or a pencil box or whatever. Um, and so I, that's, 
the first thing because in a kind of real world that we live in now the skills which design and technology the whole philosophy of it I think is central to you know, the future of the country really um, in terms of engineering as well. Alan what did you think of the Art Camp for Education being used with the machining centre there? It is a question of cost. I mean, as, as we've said, I mean, it's a very expensive outlay to actually get something which is realistic at the end of it. Can every school afford it? I mean, the, the, the re real key skill was in the ICT application, which is free, which is wonderful. But to really relate it to the real world, they did need that enormous great lump sitting in the corner to make it work. And that, that does concern me slightly in terms of the way resources are allocated to schools. Thank you very much. Now let's take a look at our second resource. We return to Allen Wells School, where Steve is using the Camtasia Studio software. Camtasia Studio enables teachers to record tutorials for training on any software. It allows teachers to record their voice and mouse movements for pupils to play back at their own speed. This enables the pupils to go through learning new software at their own pace. So let's see Camtasia Studio in use. If you were sat beside the student and you wanted to explain, first of all you do this, then you do that, then you do this, then you do that. If you could actually tape that commentary and also show those stages on a computer screen with a pointer and you show all of those stages as well. If you, if you, if you did that sitting beside a student, then that's what Camtasia is. You put the headphone set on with a microphone and you just make up a window on the screen and then you just explain each stage of the process. You're talking through it. As you can see here, you can, where your mouse is, you get a little yellow circle so that you know, you know where, where they're sort of pointing to. Once the explanation's complete, then you just save it and uh, the kids can access it as and when they need it. At any stage where the student says, could you just go back over that again? Could you just explain that again? In the same way in Camtasia, you can just move the commentary a little bit further backwards and replay it. So the student has got that teacher sat beside them all the way through and explains each stage of the process. Reduce the size of it because it'll come in really big. Yeah. You can have a whole class that are uh, learning independently. There'll be glitches, there'll be times when they sort of just can't get their head round some part of it or the instructions perhaps aren't adequate. But nevertheless, it gives a prompt rather than them sitting there getting bored, waiting wait for a teacher to sort of come and help them. We've just seen the Camtasia Studio software in use in the classroom. Now, Jonathan, this can be used across a wide range of subjects. How effective do you think it is for design and technology? It's a very, very powerful tool in design and technology. I first met Camtasia some five years ago now, and I've got to say it's one of the most educationally life-changing experiences I've enjoyed as a teacher. Picture the scene. The students come into the classroom in the morning, they sit around the front desk, and you get to work on your interactive whiteboard or your computer and you explain to the students exactly what you're going to do. Every word you speak is recorded and every motion of the mouse is recorded too. The students can share an interactive commentary also throughout. You have your normal question and answering session. And then at the end of a tutorial, you send the students back to their computers in a CAD CAM lesson and they can watch the same tutorial you've just given there at the whiteboard on their PCs. Now that is a marvellous facility. Jonathan, clearly a fan. <laughs> Ray, what do you think about the Camtasia Studio software? I'm pleased you told me how you used it, actually, yeah. Um, because, I mean, my first concern when I saw it was that these kids were being stuck down in front of a screen with a, a tutor, really, um, and they were being let loose on it, and that was it. For uh, individualising the learning and for giving us the teacher their set, you know, having a teacher next to you all the time, it's a great tool. Um, but that upfront input I think is essential first of all but I can see it being used you know really useful in, in a lot of different circumstances uh, but not just here it is get on with it um, but it is very much about freeing up teacher time and anything that will enable teachers to concentrate on individuals in the class it's fantastic. Alan what did you think of Camtasia Studio being used for design and technology? My, my problem with it always is that you could end up with some fairly 
pedestrian descriptions of how to run a programme if the teacher at the front wasn't that good at inspiring. But if you've got that element of inspiration to get them going, you've then got them working at the level they want to work at, at the speed they want to get at, and they've always got the opportunity to go back and check those things out. So it sounds wonderful, but you know, once again, it is the teacher that is the major resource, not the piece of kit or the piece of technology that goes with it. And I, I can see actually opportunities right across the curriculum with that, you know, in every single subject where that would work extremely well. And the description of the interactive whiteboard demonstration with a personalised follow-up sounds very exciting. So I am enthused in the same way as Jonathan is. Good. Right, thank you very much. Now, beyond the scope of the two resources that we've looked at in the classroom today, let's take a look at what else is out there for secondary design and technology. So, Jonathan, what other resources have caught your eye? Well, I'd recommend a visit to the Design Association website. That's www.data.org.uk. Have a look there for the links to the CAD CAM and Schools initiative. It's, it's well worth a visit. A secondary source I'd like you to look at is a piece of hardware called the DigiMemo. The DigiMemo is a paper pad with a plastic backing. It's got a little electronic pen. The fabulous thing about this product is that every stroke you write is recorded dig digitally. It can save up to 999 pages on ordinary paper. It can save it to a compact flashcard and costs just £80. If you buy the additional software for £34, it will recognise your handwriting. But it's, there's a spin-off. And the spin-off is, if you get an artist or yourself to do a sketch on the paper, you can grab that image electronically and then put it into the CAD software. So you can engrave it in a three-axis machine or cut it out on a laser machine. It's a fabulous piece of kit. Sounds really wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. So to recap, we've looked at two resources in the classroom today. First of all, we looked at ArtCam for Education software being used in conjunction with a Unimatic Educam 3-axis machining centre. And secondly, we looked at Camtasia Studio software. Now, Jonathan, out of those two, which one would you choose? Well, it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation for me, really. But if I have to be honest, what really made it happen for me in the classroom with my children and had greatest impact has to be our for education. Uh, as a result of that software, um, students have been enlightened to the world of CAD CAM, have made quality products from there on in. As a result of that, certainly the learning experiences of students has been enhanced by Camtasia software. But I think really it's the onus is on teachers of design and technology to make sure that they get in touch with the design association and get CAD CAM for education in their schools. Why not? Thank you very much. So the resource review recommendation for secondary design and technology is ArtCAM for Education software. Now details of all the resources featured on the programme can be found on our website which is teachers.tv forward slash resource review or if you've got any queries you can email us resource review at teachers.tv so all that remains for me to do is to say thank you very much to our panel for taking part thanks to you for watching and we'll see you next time on resource review bye bye